Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. And today I am joined by Fabio Constantino, who is the managing director and founder at Inatia, excuse me, Inatx Executive Search. Fabio, yep, I'm so excited to be sitting down. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm uh, going to dive into some fun conversation around just business, kind of your journey over the last several years and growing a business and operating and all that kind of stuff. Really just share a sneak peek into what it's like to, to build and operate a business. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, why don't we just start with kind of the 10,000 foot view, if you would give us just a brief overview of your background and tell us a little bit about the business. Uh, sure. By the way, thanks for having me on uh, on this little show and uh, this uh, recording. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, so my personal background, I come from the semiconductor capital equipment industry. I was in the industry for about 20 years or so, primarily in product marketing, product management roles. Um, I've always wanted to start my own business and never really knew what to do, but uh, to keep it short, uh, I decided to start an executive recruiting firm called Anatix Executive Search. And that was uh, primarily, you know, with a focus on what my background was. So our focus is to work with high tech capital uh, equipment manufacturers. Very cool. So uh, I always like to just set the stage for uh, for the viewers because we we have an opportunity to talk to you know so many different businesses on on the show here. Uh, so I like to just kind of set the stage in what does your current ownership structure look like? And what I mean by that really is you know are you a sole founder? Do you have business partners? Have you taken on investors? Just generally speaking, you don't have to go into like any you know private specifics or anything like that. But just generally yeah. speaking, kind of what what does your business look like in terms of that general over ownership structure? So I'm the I'm the uh, sole owner of the business. I started the business on my own, my own funding, uh, no external investors or funding of any kind. Very cool. And when you look at the the business today, um, I, what's your current role in the business? How many different hats do you play or do you wear in the business today? A lot of hats. We're a small firm. So yeah, with every small firm, you wear a lot of hats. Excellent. Is there one hat that you wear more so than any of the others? Um, I mean... I am the executive recruiter and the business owner. So I manage all of the finances, the business, the people, even though we're a small firm with only a few uh, direct reports, uh, but I'm also the primarily executive recruiter per se. Got it. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you kind of giving the context there. Uh, I'd love to just kind of walk through, you know, what makes your business so special? So executive recruiting, uh, I know you kind of talked a little bit about, um, you know, the the industry that you got into serving initially, uh, but I always like to ask the question, you know, who primarily does your business serve today? And the way that I like to frame this up is if I'm in the audience and I'm watching this later on, how do I know that I might, you know, know somebody or I myself might be a good fit to, you know, work with y'all's firm for this type of service? Okay. So we're an executive and professional recruiting or retain recruiting firm. Um, in terms of the market and who we serve, I would say the niche would be high-tech capital equipment and instrumentation manufacturers, okay? So, and that is more specifically in, uh, because of my background in traditional thin films or semiconductors, LED, flat panels, solar, all of those thin film processes, but we also work with any high-tech equipment manufacturer as a client, right? Not candidates necessarily, but as my, our clients, uh, they can be in other industries as well. For example, in additive manufacturing with 3D printing equipment or in um, uh, uh, scanning, 3D scanning equipment or CMM equipment. So any high-tech machinery manufacturer or analytical instrument manufacturer almost independent of an industry are the types of clients that we work with. Very cool. Is there a lot that, you know, a lot of executive recruiters that work on that space specifically, or, or are you kind of setting yourself apart with, with just that niche? Yeah. So that's a good point. Um, so uh, 
There are, but I would say no one really does it in the same way that we do it. There's a lot of, for example, contingency recruiting, okay? Uh, that can work specifically maybe in semiconductor industry or that include semiconductor industry or that include um, uh, capital equipment. But I would say in terms of niche of capital equipment only uh, and retain only, there's only very few that uh, really work in this, uh, in this area. Very cool. It's always good to have you know, less competitors out there in, in kind of the specifics that, that you do, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm curious just over the last, you know, I don't know, six months, not quite maybe 12 months at this point, we've, we've definitely seen some changes in the, the job marketplace, especially in, uh, you know, some of these more tech oriented industries. I'm curious, what has been some of the things that, that you've seen? Have you seen a, you know, a slowdown in the, in the ability for, you know, recruiting this type of a position? Um, has it been yeah, you know, as solid as it has been? Can I give us some context there? Yeah, no, no problem. So um, that's interesting point. So with respect to the industry that we're uh, focused on a lot, which is the high tech industry, um, oddly enough, during COVID and all of that, we actually had an uptick. Um, and a lot of that was due to the demand for electronics, working from home and all of that. And actually, uh, the recruiting industry, and it was very difficult to find candidates. There was a lot of open positions. Business was great. As we got towards the end of COVID, um, the high-tech industry slowed down significantly. And that was roughly around mid to late 2022 uh, and we're actually in that slowdown still now mm. so uh that has been ongoing with some signs of potential upside i would say towards the end of 2023 that's kind of where it stands right now excellent is there anything that you've had to shift kind of in, in y'all's business model or kind of the approach to uh, how you find talent anything like that has there been anything that you've had to adjust or shift for in in this bit of a slowdown that there might have been well our operating model uh, allows us a little bit of flexibility so we have internal people but we also have outside resources that we can tap on and i do that intentionally so that we can tap onto those resources as business grows. Um, so, it, you know, the recruiting industry tends to go up and down a lot, uh, which also means that you need to be prepared and flexible for that. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that there is a lot of changes that we have made. It's just how we're operating and how we're leveraging those resources, I would say. Got it. Very cool. Uh, well, I always love to ask kind of some questions around marketing specifically. You know, it's one of those areas that it's vital to every business to have marketing that that works. Uh, but it's an area that, you know, oftentimes, especially newer business owners tend to be challenged with a little bit. So I like to just kind of, you know, ask some questions, find out, you know, what's working for other business owners. Um, you know, it sounds like your, your clientele are primarily, a, you know, a larger demographic in terms of size of business types of uh, folks that you may need to, to market to and have conversations with. Um, what has been your philosophy to, to marketing and generate generating the leads that turn into the clients that you work with? So I think you're going to be surprised by my answer uh, in all honesty. Um, word of mouth. We don't, I mean, other than a professional looking website, which today is a requirement for any business. And by the way, I'm, I'm saying this for my specific business. Mm -hmm. I would not say that this is the right formula for all businesses or even maybe even for other types of recruiting businesses. But for me specifically and for our business, it's word of mouth, it's reputation. Uh, I have done zero marketing from the time I opened the business over eight and a half years ago. And our growth has been, I would say we have grown every single year since then, with the exception maybe of this year that it looks like it might be a little bit lower the way that it's going from last year. Uh, but we have grown every single year and it's 
primarily word of mouth and reputation. So uh, I think we can do that, but it's not necessarily the right answer for most businesses. Excellent. So being a business that started with reputation and, and word of mouth as being kind of the primary acquisition channel, um, that, that first year that you were in business or how did you get kind of the first couple clients that, you know, helped continue to build reputation and word of mouth from experience moving forward? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, I kid you not, that was the most difficult year I have gone through in probably my entire career. Um, you know, going from a, a, a good paying job for 20 years uh, in different companies, of course, uh, and getting a paycheck every, you know, every other week uh, and having the sustained family and then moving away from that and going to starting your own business and not knowing, you know, how things are gonna go um, was definitely a risk, but a risk I was willing to take and prepared for it, um, but it was difficult. Um, but to answer your question throughout those 20 years, I have built up my network, mm. right? So, uh, because of that, um, I was able to already have some sort of a reputation within the industry to allow me to get one candidate, to get a second candidate, a third candidate, and, you know, slowly start building from there. But again, it was based on just reputation because there were new clients I would call that would say Fabio who in ATX who who are you you've been in business for how long a few months why should I work with you right so uh but slowly it it built up hmm. so I'm curious and this kind of goes on the the retention of clients the, the reputation piece of things um how have you built that that relationship capital or kept, you know, all of that kind of going to build that reputation over, you know, the number of years that you've been in business? What are some of the, the keys to, to keeping a, a strong reputation? Well, obviously results is the number one thing, right? Uh, so delivering on what you say that you're going to deliver, right? Uh, so if a client gives me a search and I need to go, you know, do that search, I'm going to, deliver on what I said I, I said I would. But, you know, most importantly is integrity, right? Keeping integrity, making sure that you're respectful, right? And, uh, you know, making sure that you're ethical. Uh, I mean, this industry, in all honesty, can come across as not being a very ethical industry. And, you know, to be honest, recruiters don't have a very good reputation as a whole. Um, you know, it's kind of like a used car salesman, right? You kind of have to deal with them, don't really like them uh, in most situations. But every once in a while, you come across a great salesperson and, you know, is a joy to work with. And so kind of the recruiting industry is a little bit similar to that. Um, um, so. That makes sense. So I want to go back to kind of this journey into starting the business. So. 20 odd years, uh, you know, working kind of corporate world, that sort of thing, moving into it, wanted to start a business for yourself, making that leap. What was the catalyst that, uh, that really made you make that decision and go into business for yourself? Um, you know, I've always wanted to start my own business, never really had the guts to do it again, kind of going back to that you know, paycheck every, you know, every two weeks, and it's consistent, um, to some extent, lower risk, but businesses always have issues. Um, but also working for someone else, even though you do everything correctly, the way you think you should be doing, there's still variables within the business that you can't control. Um, there's still people that you report into or um, business goals that maybe don't necessarily match with what your departmental goals are or what your personal goals are. And, um, you know, those are all issues you have to deal with. Having your own business 
allows you to really take make those decisions for yourself and and stick with them uh so you'll either have the rewards from it or you won't but at least you know that it was your own personal decision and you can do things the way that you want them to be done so i think that flexibility and um you know it is a lot of weight a lot of risk but I, it feels like you're more willing to take those risks because you own the business and it's for mm. you. I like that. So as you look back on your journey, what has been like the biggest lesson that you've had to learn as a business owner? A biggest lesson? Um, you know, I'm not sure that in terms of a biggest lesson that I have had, but um, You know, coming across and doing things for yourself is definitely different than having to uh, work for someone else. So I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what the biggest lesson was that I had throughout this year. Uh, it's just something that you go through and you're learning on a case by case basis and, and trying to grow as you can. Excellent. Well, before we jump into you know some of the rapid fire questions, I do want to be respectful of the time that we have here together today. Um, I want to you know just ask a couple questions on where do you see the business in the next five years? Is your you know what are you excited about in in continuing to grow and build the business? Uh, where where do you see yourself or you see the business in the next kind of three to five years? Um, in terms of growth, obviously hiring a plus talent. I think that's uh the one thing as we're growing uh so timely decisions on that uh expanding maybe into other industries that we haven't expanded into and again supporting that with the right talent but i think one of the most important things really is how do i get to the business to a point where it can kind of sustain itself so right now a lot of the business is really dependent on me and how I do business. Um, there's improvements and inefficiencies that can be done. Um, but in all honesty, you know, if I step away for too long, it cannot sustain itself. So figuring out a way of how to either hire talent to learn from myself and or put in processes in place that allow for the business to function a little bit more on its own would be maybe a major goal. Mm -hmm. I love that. So as we as we start to kind of wrap up some of the conversation here today, I've got you know a couple of rapid fire questions that I'd love to to ask uh, to kind of give some context, give some you know some quick nuggets for the mm -hmm. audience. Um, so we'll go kind of top ahead answers for for each of these next four questions. I know we probably could go deep on all of them, but we'll go top ahead answers for these. Uh, first one here is what is your key to success? Key to success. Um... Key to success, in all honesty, is really just having integrity, um, being respectful for, with the people that you work with, right? And just establishing trust. Um, having character really is the most important thing, I would say. Things that come to mind right now, anyway. I love it. What's your one piece of advice for other business owners? Uh, I would say when you're speaking with anyone that you're speaking with, um, put yourself in their shoes. You know, most of the time it's about them and not about you. Actually, I would say almost all the time. Uh, so just always put yourself in their shoes and, and, and think about it that way. I love that. Uh, what's one book that you're either reading now or you've read most recently? I've been going through a book called Pivot. I don't quite remember. I could probably look it up, but I don't quite remember the, the author's name. But it's mainly around uh, pivoting your career or how to pivot your career. Um, so that's, uh, that's an interesting book. I've been liking that just because 
types of advices that I give to candidates um, about how to pivot career and things like that that they always seek. Very cool. And I always love to ask the kind of the final rapid fire question here is uh, if you had to choose just one area that you could sprinkle some magic dust on and improve in your business overnight, where would you put that magic dust? Um, I think I go back to how do I make the business more self-sufficient? Um, what, what processes, procedures do we put in place in order for the business to kind of run on its own, um, you know, being more efficient and being, because it's all about efficiency in this business. So if you can put a process in place and be able to do that, um, that would help out a lot. Fantastic. Um, so for those that are watching, when I'd highly encourage you to save this video, go back, watch, grab these nuggets, all of that kind of stuff, start to implement some of these ideas into your own business uh, as you continue to grow. But for, for those that are watching, Fabio, where can, uh, where can we instruct them to go? Where can we have them go to find out more information, to connect with you, to learn more? Um, you know, what, where can we guide the audience to a next step? Uh, I mean, obviously, the easiest way is to just go to our website. Uh, all our contact information is there. It's uh, www.innatiux.com, and that's I-N-N-A-T-I-U-X.com. Uh, contact information is there, email, phone number. Um, that would be the easiest way to do it. Beautiful. I will put that in the video description below. So once we wrap up here, make sure you go check out the description of the video, grab that link and go check out all the information on the business. Um, but Fabio, as we wrap up, I always like to end on one very specific question. And that question is this, what is most inspiring to you today? For me, in all honesty, at this point in my life, I would say family, faith, and just or belief in yourself. Um, you know, when you were young, we're thinking about money, we're thinking about growing. Uh, at this point in my career, in the latter part of the career, although I still have many years to go, you start thinking about faith and family and, and leaving a legacy. Um, that's what's most important for me, I would say today. Absolutely love that. Fabio, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me, to share your story, to share your experience, your wisdom nuggets over the last several years of building a business. Uh, it's been truly a pleasure. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to, to be here with me today. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Tanner. I appreciate the time. It was a, it was a pleasure.